My god, Michael, I know you're long-winded, but can you really fill like 15 minutes of airtime just by talking about rounding? Oh, ye of little faith. Hello, all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Let's talk about rounding. So Game Maker has a few different uh, rounding-related functions built in, and they all behave in slightly different ways. Uh, first, of course, you have round, which is uh, similar, although not identical, to the way that most of you probably learned about rounding in math class when you were little. Uh, there's also floor, and this is for rounding a number down. No matter what the decimal part is, it will always take the decimal part, chop it off, and it will give you the, um, basically the integer part of a number. So if you, if you have uh, something like 4.1, it'll be rounded down to 4. If you have 4.5, it'll still be rounded down to 4. If you have 4.999, it'll still be rounded down to 4. And then on the other hand, you have seal, which if you never thought about it before, you have floor, which is like the thing beneath your feet. And you have seal, which is the ceiling, which is the thing that's overhead. And that will do essentially the opposite of floor. Seal will round a number up to the next whole number. So if you have 4.1, that will be rounded up to 5 if you have, um, if you have 4.5, that will be rounded up to 5. Even if the decimal part is very, very small, like if you have 4.01, that will still be rounded up to 5. And as for round itself, uh, this is something that comes up once in a while, and once in a while it will leave somebody very, very confused if they're not expecting it. Uh, whereas in elementary school you probably learned that if the fractional part of a number is 1 half or greater, you will always round it up, otherwise you will always round it down. Uh, that is not quite how round works. Uh, round in computer science generally works on what you might have heard as banker's rounding or statistical rounding. In most cases, it will behave the same as the rounding that you learned about in elementary school, but if the fractional part of a number is exactly 0.5, uh, let's say if we have our n is going to be equal to 0 0.5, and if we try to round that, um, it will be rounded to the nearest even number instead. So if I were to show message round of n, Actually, this I said 4.5, didn't I? If I were to show message the result of this, uh, we will have instead of 5, we're going to have 4. As we see here. And let me just throw game end on the end of this. Uh, whereas if we have something like 5.5, the fractional part of this is still exactly 1 half, and we are going to instead round this to 6, because 6 is the nearest even number. Uh, 5 is not an even number. As you can see, it's a small difference uh, from the uh, the rounding that you probably learned about in school. Over the course of very large data sets, it gives a slightly more accurate result than if you just rounded to the nearest whole number. That's the round function. That's not what I'm here for today. So the fact that GameMaker has these functions is nice, but ultimately all three of them will only round to single numbers. And sometimes when you're making games or sometimes when you're writing code in general, you may want to instead round to the nearest let's say multiple of 10, or the next, the nearest even number. Or if you're dealing with hexadecimal, you might want to round to the nearest 16 or something. And none of these functions provide a nice built-in way to do that. You can't ask the round function to round to the nearest 16. But fortunately, it is fairly simple to, uh, to do this ourselves. The code to write it is not difficult. So what I'm instead going to do, and from here on out for the rest of the video, anytime I say the word round, um, in reference to one of the rounding functions, just imagine that this can work with either round, floor, or seal, uh, depending on whether you want to round up or down versus always rounding down versus always rounding up. So if I wanted to round, uh, let's say 5.5 to, to the nearest multiple of 10, uh, we can first n divided by 10, uh, 10 being the number that we want to round to the nearest multiple of, um, put this inside the rounding function, and multiply it again at the end by 10. And when we run the game, uh, this is going to give us 10, because 10 is the nearest multiple of 10 to 5.5. If we were to instead put in something like 13.25, uh, this is also going to give us 10, as you were going to see. If we instead give it something like 83.25, actually, let's round up. Let's make it 88.25. Uh, this is going to give us 90, as you can see. And this will allow us to always round to the nearest multiple of 10. Or, uh, depending on what you need, you could put in some other, some other value in here, and you could, multi you could round it to the nearest multiple of 2, or 5, or 15, or something else. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a whole number. If you wanted to round to the nearest, like, 2.5, uh, you, could, you could put 2.5 in there, and it will still work. Uh, we will have 87.50 is, is the nearest multiple of 2.5 to, to this number that we, that we have there. 
So, as I said, uh, I say the word rounding function, that is really referring to any of the three rounding functions. If you want to round down to the nearest multiple of 10, you could instead say floor and leave the rest of the code exactly the same, and this will give you 80. Uh, if you were to instead seal, uh, this will give you 90. If you were to try to seal uh, with the nearest 2.5, this should also give us 90 because 88.25 is closer to 90 than than it is to, uh, what was the other one, 87.5. If you were to use the seal function, you would also get 90, because again, we're rounding up. Now, depending on how often you, you need to do this, if you need to do this just, just once or twice in your entire game, it's probably fine. You probably won't mind just typing out this code. I'm gonna change this back to round. Uh, you may, if you need to do this often, uh, you may need to, you may desire to at least instead uh, define some of your own functions, perhaps let's call them, I'll do it up here at the top. Uh, function, let's call it round x for like an extended rounding function. And uh, this will take two parameters. This will take n, which is just the number that you want to round, and uh, the number that you want to round, and I guess we'll call it the base that you want to round to. I'll just call this base out of lack of better things to call it. And you can wrap this logic inside, um, inside a function, and you could say uh, return round n divided by base times base. And that is going to be a general form of what we just, what we had previously written out uh, manually. So now I can call this function, call it round x. Um, let's, uh, let's round the value of n and let's go again to the nearest 10. And this will give us 90, just like that. If you wanted to have a, uh, a separate function for flooring, uh, you could call it instead maybe perhaps floor extended and you could call you could call it like this uh, if you want to to do a seal version to round up like this uh, floor X would give us 80 seal X would give us 90 okay so that's advanced rounding uh, if you wanted to and admittedly I, there are not many situations where you would want to do this you can also do this to, with other mathematical operations this does not have to be restricted to rounding to a nearest multiple of, of 10 or or anything like that if you wanted to instead round to the nearest square number um, you could perhaps I'm going to just define another function uh, let's call this um, let's say round square and this is only going to take one parameter but if you wanted to, you could return the result of round square root of n. Um, this is the square root of n is equivalent to the stuff that was inside the rounding function before. Uh, the rest of it is going to take a similar form and we are going to raise the results of the rounding function to the power of, of two. And therefore, if I were to say round square, and we would be rounding to the nearest uh, to the nearest square number. This will give us 81, just like this. Uh, if I were to instead pick, uh, let's let's go with another number. Let's try to round like 75 or something like that. That will also give us 81. It'll be rounded up instead of down to 81. If I were to, if I were to instead try to round 70 70 to the nearest square, uh, we would have 64 because 64 is closer is the uh, the square number that's closest to 70 than than 81, rather than 81, rather. And at this point, your imagination should be starting to run wild with other things that you can do with this. Something that I find myself doing on occasion is rounding to the nearest power of two. Uh, again, this is gonna be rather similar. I can call this function round nearest power of two. Please think of a better name to give this if you do it yourself. And instead of doing something like this, instead of returning uh, the rounded square root raised to the second power, we are instead going to um, round the, uh, the log of two. And instead of raising that value to the second power, we are going to do it in reverse. We are going to raise two to the power of whatever this, this value is. And this is going to allow us to round 70, 70 to the nearest power of two, which incidentally is also going to be 64 because uh, two to the six is 64. If I were to make this something more like 100, uh, we would instead be getting 128, just like this. If we were to give it a truly staggeringly gargantuan number, uh, that is, I don't even know what number that is. I wanna say that's um, 10 million. The nearest power of two there is gonna be 8,388,608. That is, if I'm counting correct correctly, two raised to the 23rd. 
So, uh, things you might want to do this for, if you're working with... In, in computers, you tend to work with binary numbers a lot, because powers of two are special magic numbers that tend to appear over and over again for various purposes. Um, whenever I'm working with things like trying to create texture pages on the fly using surfaces or something like that, or assembling them out of existing sprites, um, it is helpful to, uh, instead of rounding to the nearest power of two, maybe to s instead seal to the nearest power of two, and then instead of, um, instead of uh, rounding up or down to the nearest power of two, this will round up to the nearest power of two, and if you want to create, for example, a texture page that will be big enough to fit the dimensions of a, um, of an image, you might want to do something like that. I do know what this is going to be off the top of my head. This is going to be a 16,777,216. Um, as you can see, and I'm not just so much of a nerd that I've, that I've memorized that. This is actually a number that appears uh, fairly often because this is 2 to the 24th. So that's fancy rounding. Uh, I'm not going to go into other functions that you can use this for. Any other mathematical operation that you could, like, do and then reverse, such as taking the square root and raising it to a power, it will also work in here. For what it's worth, I can't really think of reasons that you would want to do something like this. Perhaps if you're making something like an RPG, a role-playing game, and you have a, um, a stat growth equation that goes something like, I don't know, the player's level is going to be equal to the, uh, the amount of EXP they have squared, and you want to figure out what level they are for any given uh, experience level, you could use something like floor square. You could use something like this, and that will tell you what level they are based on, the, um, based on how much experience they have, even if the amount of experience they have isn't an exact uh, square number. Hey. Any function that you can take the inverse of and then, and then uninvert. Is that a word? It's a word now. Anyway, I'm going to stop. I don't think I filled 15 minutes of airtime by talking about rounding, but I gave it a good effort. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, so if you're interested in seeing more weird and nerdy stuff like this, feel free to subscribe. Uh, no code this time. No GitHub repository. This is just... This is one of my little computer science demos. I don't usually put those in GitHub. But I do have a Patreon if you want to contribute towards these videos being made. Uh, links to that will be in all the usual places. You could see your name in the credits, hear yourself shouted out at the end, you could see a bit of a preview of my future plans, that kind of thing. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Edward Holt, Posho, Emily Coyo, Tusk, Sindra Larson, Gunnar Clovis, Squarecrow, and Azarel Studios for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.